Rotor's 1x13 hydraulic group set is an engineering marvel that would be a completely irrational buying decision for most of us. But for those of you who appreciate cutting edge tech, which is critically unique, it will absolutely delight. Rotor's 1x13 group set, and to be clear, that is all it is called, there's no flashy names here, was officially launched at Eurobike last year. The group set follows on the heels of Rotor's Uno group set, which was again a 2x hydraulic group set, which was originally launched back in 2016. But this one, as the name suggests, sees the front shifting ditched in favour of a 1x system. There's a lot to talk about here, but of course, one of the key things is the fact that it is the world's first 13 speed group set. And we're going to get to that in a bit, but I have to say, of all the things with this group set, the fact it's 13 speed is not the most interesting. I've only had a few short weeks to test the group set, and although that's enough time to give you a thorough overview of how it performs, I cannot really cover longevity or what it's like to install the group set, so I'm not going to cover that in this review. However, we've been promised by Rotor that later in the year, we're going to get, hopefully, a mountain bike version of the group set. Now, it's worth stressing at this point that the group set is designed to be a highly modular system. So there's a lot of shared components here, and critically, that rear derailleur is rated for use on mountain bikes, road bikes, gravel bikes, cross bikes, a whole lot. So hopefully, once we receive that group set, we'll be able to give you a more thorough overview of its longevity and, critically, its performance off-road. So stay tuned for that later in the year. So first things first, and before we get on to the fact it's 13 speed, let's just cover again why Rotor decided in the first place with Uno to go for a hydraulic group set. Now number one of those reasons, and what I think is probably the most realistic reason, is that the group set market is dominated by the big three manufacturers. So that's SRAM, Shimano, and Campagnolo. Now these brands themselves work within the constraints of patents and patents which have been filed by each other. But they've been around far, far longer than Rotor, so kind of innovation and what you can do within the group set market is very, very limited. Rotor, wanting to enter into the group set market, was then forced to go for a hydraulically actuated group set. There are also other reasons, and some of them are you know, genuinely quite compelling, to go for a hydraulic group set. Number one of these, and this is the one that Rotor is really, really keen to push, is the fact that it offers, in theory, less maintenance than even a electronic group set. The reason being is that as the system is totally sealed, it's not going to be affected by the elements. And you could say the same, of course, of an electronic group set, but because this is hydraulic, you don't need to worry about charging it. There's also a few other interesting things that can be done with the hydraulic group set, and again, I'm going to come to those later. The question on many of your lips will, of course, be why go for 13 speed in the first place? And it's a very fair question because it cannot help but feel as if we're in this ridiculous group set arms race where everybody's just desperately trying to outdo one another. With a 13 speed one, there is probably a little bit of that, but there is rationale behind it as well. With your typical 2 by 11 group set, you in theory only actually have 14 usable gears. And when I say usable gears, I mean ones which cannot be replicated with another combination of gears or ones which don't put the chain into some absolutely ridiculous and unusable chain line. So going to 13 speed over 12 speed gets you one step closer to that 14. Will we see a 14 speed group set in the future? Possibly. And yes, I do know that Roloff already has a 14 speed hub, so no need to comment that, please. Now I'm sure there's plenty of you, and I, I would count myself among that number, who are absolutely happy with a 1x11 drivetrain. So why go for 13 speed in that case? Well, it's just a case of improving or reducing the steps between gears. And on the road that is of course a concern. You don't want to be mashing along on the flat with just slightly too hard a gear, just slightly too easier a gear. So having those smaller steps, particularly in the middle and top of the cassette, is definitely a good thing. It's worth noting that Rotor has done something quite interesting in accommodating that 13th cog on the cassette. The spacing on the cassette is exactly the same as a 12-speed cassette, but they've added that additional cog off the end of the cassette. What this means is with the new group set, although you are getting a slightly more aggressive chain line at the extremes of the cassette, is there's no need for a new chain, and the group set is built around a standard 12-speed KMC chain. Now, of course, there may be advantages to going to a narrower chain, but for Rotor, who bear in mind is a pretty small company, to develop their own chain and all the stamping dies and all that sort of stuff associated with it would probably be very cost prohibitive. 
and given the reception of the fact it's 13 speed in the first place, I think forcing a new standard of chain on people might have just broken the internet. <laughs> Now I do promise I am actually going to get onto how this stuff rides, but the last thing I want to cover is just how the hydraulic group set works in the first place. Unlike every other group set on the market, the indexing, so that's the stepping between gears, of the 1x13 group set is built into the derailleur. Every other group set has this based in the shifter, or if you want to be a pedant, with an electronic group set, you're essentially moving a motor to predetermined stops along the path of the derailleur. Rotor claims there's a number of advantages to this setup, namely that by having the indexing built into the derailleur, you can get much more accurate shifts with far less maintenance than a mechanical group set. This makes sense in theory because there's a disconnect from a shifter to a rear derailleur with that long length of housing, and by having it in there, you're essentially just operating a hydraulic switch at the lever end, which will move that mech into predetermined positions. And that segues nicely into talking about how the group set performs. Now, if you've seen any writing or videos about Rotor's Uno group set, you will remember that the thing that the majority of testers didn't get on with was the front shifting, and I count myself among that number. Now, moving to a 1x13 group set, you've got rid of the main sticking point that people didn't get on with with the original one. However, I think it's safe to say that the rear shifting did have its own issues, namely, that because that indexing is built into the rear mech, it can feel a little bit vague at times. Things have been improved with the 1x13 group set, and if you're shifting up or down a cog, there's a very, very subtle but very noticeable click. So you're not getting that kind of vague feeling where you're unsure if you have shifted or not. Just like Uno, Rotor's 1x13 shifting works a very similar way to SRAM double tap. So a small click inboard shifts you down the cassette and a little bit more shifts you up the cassette and then with that rest of that swing, you can shift up to three cogs at once. Now those up and down shifts on single cogs, they actually feel very, very good. There's a very like definite but quite soft click, but there's no kind of vagueness or uncertainty whether you've actually shifted or not. However, I found that with that, that swing inwards, when you're trying to shift multiple cogs up, it is a little bit more vague and I would personally prefer to have some kind of indexing, even just you know, an audible tactile ratchet that kind of told you if you were shifting or not, because there is this kind of vagueness as you get past that first shift. However, I can absolutely defend those single up and down shifts as being incredibly fast, very accurate, and very good under power. Going back to those multiple upshifts, and to be fair, probably the single shifts as well, there is a not inconsiderable amount of force required to actually shift. It doesn't feel like with a mechanical group set where you have like a sticky cable, it is just like pure mechanical resistance, which isn't necessarily an issue, but it's something that takes a little bit of getting used to, and it took me a few rides before I began to mesh with the, the shifting well. On that note, I really think it's worth stressing that muscle memory definitely plays a part here, I have almost exclusively ridden Shimano group sets for months now, and even going to SRAM feels a little bit different. It takes a bit of time to get used to. So moving to something which is so totally alien is, is, is obviously going to feel weird for the first few rides. And that's something I really want to stress. Rotor's 1x13 group set is not SRAM or Shimano. It's totally different. So if you're going to it expecting to have the same shift ergonomics, you're going to be disappointed because it is just different. The overall ergonomics of the shifter, on the other hand, are actually quite good. They've got a really nice, quite wide, flat top, and it means it's a really nice place to spend hours at a time with no hot spots, and it's just very comfortable in your hands. On the other hand, I found the height of the shifters, so as in how big they are that way, is actually quite big. I was sad enough to go and actually double check all of this stuff, and I measured the rotor hoods as coming in at 52 millimeters tall which is pretty big compared to the 45mm for an Ultegra hydro lever and the 43mm for a SRAM ETAP hydro lever. The stroke of the shift lever is also actually pretty far and this is non-adjustable and I've got relatively big hands. So if you've got particularly small hands, you may struggle to mesh well with the group set. Overall, I neither love or hate the ergonomics of the shifting system. It's, it's very unique. And I think that's the thing I really, really want to stress is just different. And what Rotor has accomplished within the constraints of one, making a hydraulic group set, and two, 
the patents which exist and they have to get around it is a very impressive thing. And if I had to conclude, I'd say if I'd never used another group set in my life before and I was totally unfamiliar with them and I used the group set, I would probably be very happy with it. So just remember, it's not bad, it's just different. If I had to conclude very, very briefly, I would say that moving to 13 speed is a very welcome thing, it feels good, but it's not quite a game changer. I think the 13 speed definitely closes those gaps, particularly in the, the kind of middle of the cassette and towards the top. And just to be clear, the one I was using was a 10 to 36 cassette. And yeah, you know, having those small gaps is definitely a good thing. On that note, if you're gonna buy this group set, you have a, an incredibly broad selection of gears and chain rings, oval ones, round ones, all that that you can choose from. So you should, in theory, and I'm sure Rotor would help you with this, be able to kind of tailor the group set to your needs. Incidentally, I have used oval rings in the past, but this was my first time using Rotor's curing system, and I really liked it. There's a kind of a, a subtle but noticeable improvement, certainly for me, in my kind of pedaling smoothness and flat terrain, but more than anything, I just, I just like the way it feels. So I would implore you, if you have a chance to try out the curing system or something similar, definitely give it a go because it's, it's quite a unique thing, but I definitely liked it. As I mentioned before, the spacing on the cassette is the same as a 12-speed cassette, except for there's an additional cog bolted onto the end. Now this means at the extreme ends of the cassette, the chain has to perform incredible acts of contortion. And if you're the type of rider who really demands on having a, a completely silent bike, the 1x13 group set, and to be fair, any 1x group set is probably not for you. In that largest cog, the chain is at a wild, wild angle, and it is, it's pretty noisy. I imagine this would settle down in time, but I don't think it's realistic to expect a one by drive train to be totally silent in these circumstances. With that said, it doesn't bother me, it might bother you, but just bear that in mind. If you like it quiet, it will not be the one for you. On the other hand, again though, having a rear mech equipped with a clutch, which is a relatively rare thing in the road bike world these days, was a very welcome addition. It is not until you've ridden on the road with a bike, with a clutch, that you realize how noisy a non-clutched equipped mech can be on rough roads. It's blissfully silent and it's so nice not having that chain slapping away on the chainstay. Now, there's tons more I could talk about, about cassette options, chain ring options, the spread of gears and all that stuff that's available, but it would be incredibly boring to listen to me talk about all those numbers. So if you'd like to learn more about that, check our link in the description to the full review of our original story on the group set and check out our original video on it from last summer. Next up is the brakes. Now, it's very easy to get swept up in all the excitement about these, these wonderful 13 cogs in the back, but the brakes were actually one of the standout things for me in the group set. The brakes, which are produced in collaboration with Magura, feel excellent. I'm not gonna say they're necessarily better or worse than SRAM or Shimano, but they're very, again, different. They have this lovely, very smooth free stroke, which is followed by a very sharp and defined feel as the pads hit the rotor, but there's still plenty modulation on tap. It's hard to say exactly why this is, but the caliper is a very substantial, chunky unit, and I imagine this is probably very stiff, which will result in very good braking feel in practice. Even on long descents, I got no fade, modulation was good, and there's plenty of power on tap. The levers themselves are also a very nice shape and they have quite a nice kick towards the end, which keeps your fingers very safely in place when you're braking from the drops. If you are one of the many rim breakers amongst our number, you will be disappointed to hear that Rotor is no longer going to offer that funky hydraulic rim brake as seen on the previous Uno group set. We made a decision that given the direction the market is moving in, most people are adopting disc brakes now, so that's all you can have with this one, I'm afraid. Looking at the direction the market's going in generally, a lot of people are adopting disc brakes, and if you're the sort of person who's gonna buy a 1x13 group set that's hydraulically actuated, you're probably not interested in rim brakes in the first place. Now, I really wish I could have had more time to test the group set, not least because the bike I was using, the Argon 18, was really nice but I also wish I could tell you more about how it's gonna perform in the long run. One thing I can say though is on my first ride, the indexing was very slightly off. Nothing unusual for a new bike, 
But one of the things I found with the group set was when you're shifting slightly off in a mechanical drivetrain, there's this kind of strange hesitating sensation where it feels like it could just shift up or down the cassette at any moment. With the Rotor 1x13 group set, it just doesn't have that. I think perhaps because the indexing is built into the derailleur, it's, it's very much held solidly wherever it is. And all I had to do to rectify that was very slightly tweak that adjuster bolt to, to make it work well. So it just doesn't feel like it's going to skip at any given moment. And that kind of feeds into the idea that it will be something that's very easy to live with. One thing I cannot excuse though, is that adjuster bolt is a T30 head. Now that, that it's Torx isn't an issue, but why on earth Rotor went for a T30, which I don't think anybody has in their multi-tool, compared to T25 is beyond me. But I'll forgive it for now. A couple of things I did actually really appreciate on the Mech though were, one, they've got this really cool button called the return to origin button. And if you're taking the wheel out, you push this button as you turn the drivetrain through and it immediately puts the derailleur into the smallest cog. There's also a very nice, and it's kind of similar to SRAM's lockout for its cage. There's a button you can push on the back of the Mech which disengages the cage. And again, it makes taking the wheel out really, really easy. The whole thing just feels really solid as well. And even the most expensive, you know, mechanical derailleurs tend to have a little bit of slop in them, but the rotor really feels like a very, very solid unit. Long gone are the days when you'd buy a group set and you would receive everything from a headset to a seat post and hubs, but the rotor 1x13 group set kind of takes a step back in that direction in that, thus far, the only hubs which are compatible with the group set are rotor's own revolver hubs. As a self-confessed hubsessive, this is a deeply distressing proposition as I love to, to ogle and fondle all matter of cup and cones and sealed bearings, but I have to say the revolver hubs are very good. They have a lovely pleasing metallic whir when freewheeling. They feel as though they have a very low rolling resistance and overall they look perfectly inoffensive. So I can forgive that for the time being and I imagine depending on the popularity of the group set, there probably will be more options in the near future. As should probably be clear by now, I don't think it's particularly fair, or more accurately, I don't think it's particularly useful to draw comparisons between this group set and the other big options from the other manufacturers out there. The group set is a totally unique thing in that, well, it's one by, although there are options for that from SRAM. It's hydraulic, there's nobody else doing that out there, and it, it just tries to achieve different things compared to those group sets. But with that said, it doesn't exist in a vacuum, and questions about how it stacks up will inevitably arise. So I'll cover two things here, the weight and the cost of it, compared to SRAM AXS ETAP. Now I've chosen to compare it to SRAM's newly released group set because it's the newest one out there, but also it's the only one by specific road drive train out there. So it feels like an appropriate one to compare it to. Now nobody, no one on this earth is gonna claim that the one by 13 group set is affordable. It starts at 2,300 pounds for a ready to ride group set, rising to 4,000 for the top end bestest one out there. Now to be clear, that top end price includes not only a carbon wheel set, but also a dual sided power meter. Now for a comparable SRAM Red ETAP AXS group set, you're talking 3,350 pounds for an equivalent power meter equipped group set, which does not include wheels. So yes, both of them are very expensive, but you cannot accuse the rotor group set of being the most outlandishly expensive out there. But really when you're at this end of the market, is value really something you're looking at? Probably not. So the price, I think, is almost irrelevant. Now, working within the constraints of this test, I haven't been able to take the group set apart, not least because whoever's got to review it after me is probably not gonna be very happy I've been fettling with it. But working off the claimed weights from Rotor, which my gut feeling says they're probably very accurate, my setup would have a total weight of 2,550 grams. Turning to SRAM, for a drivetrain, which will give you an equivalent spread, so that's with a double chainring setup, you're talking 2,518 grams, so ever so slightly lighter than rotors. Again, this is pretty marginal, and I don't think weight is why people are going to buy the group set. And that, of course, begs the question, why would you buy it in the first place? Well, I think I have a good reason for that, and that is that it is unique. 
It is the very best group set in the world if you're looking for the world's only 1x13 hydraulic group set, and that'll be rational enough for some people. It's also backed up by pretty good performance. You know, the shift is really good on those single cogs, and although the shifting ergonomics aren't absolutely perfect, the overall package is very, very impressive. If all you're after is the best shifting performance out there, you're gonna turn to Durace or SRAM Red. If you want something that's really good value, you're probably not even looking at this end of the market and you're gonna to turn to 105 or something like that. If you're wanting something that nobody else is gonna have, this is the one for you. And even I fell into that trap. I am spoiled with all manner of cycling swag and even I delighted in the fact I was getting to ride something really fun and cool that nobody else had. Overall, I've really enjoyed my time with the group set. And for the right person, it's gonna be a fantastic choice that is very unlikely to leave you disappointed. For other people, it's just not gonna be for you and it probably never was going to be in the first place. But I can confirm that having a one by 13 hydraulically actuated group set that works very well is a very pleasing thing. And if that's the one for you, you will not be disappointed. If you've got this far, you know what's coming next. What do you guys think? Am I talking about my bum and I've been swept up by the marketing madness, or is it a truly compelling option for those that must have something different? As always, leave your thoughts in the comments, and if you have any questions, leave them there as well. And don't forget to like and subscribe.